And 10 Tampa Bay meteorologist Colleen Campbell joins us right now. Colleen, we have a weather impact alert for the weekend, and we are keeping a close watch right now on Hurricane Aaron. Yes, yeah, so the weather impact alert that we have for this weekend is for the heat. It is not for Aaron. Just wanted to clarify that. Of course, we know that here at the station, but there's a lot going on with the tropics right now. Our friends on uh, the first coast, if you joined us earlier for our streaming show, they do have a weather impact alert because they are expecting some rough surf from Aaron. We will not see that impact here on the West Coast. All right, let's get into it. Hurricane Aaron recently strengthened to a category two storm. Now, something to take away from this is that hurricane hunters were down in that storm earlier today day flying over it, dropping down some data, and that's been fed into some of our models, which is great, but it's also giving us the most up to date information, the pressure as well as the winds. The winds did increase to 100 miles per hour, and if you joined us at the start of the show, I mentioned rapid intensification. You're going to hear that ter term pretty often. What that means is when we have a storm, a tropical system that the winds increase by 35 miles per hour within 24 hours, that's considered rapid intensification. Also, you want to look for that pressure to drop. We had the pressure at 8 p.m. around 982 millibars. Now it's at 979. So this is just on the edge of that rapid intensification because remember last night it was still a tropical storm. This morning it made it to that category one hurricane status and now we're at cat two. We're going to see this thing continue to strengthen as we move into the weekend and pretty soon here we will have our first major hurricane of the season, which we usually don't receive until about September 1st, going off 30 years of climate data. So once we get that, the forecast is it for this to strengthen to a category three status tomorrow. So again, this system is going to be big and powerful. The good news is, is that it will just track north of the Leeward Islands as well as the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. So that's something we do like to see. That's a trend that uh, has been picked up recently in the models. But look at this by uh, Saturday night. Tomorrow night we have 130 mile per hour mile, mile per hour winds 145 by Sunday morning. A uh, category five storm. You have to have winds around 155, I believe so. This will eventually weaken, it looks like, in the latest track. That's something we'd like to see. We have a trough that's coming in and also another little area of disturbed weather that I'm going to point out in just a second. But here's the global models. Again, the global models in pretty good agreement of that recurve. That is Bermuda right there. And then we have a couple outliers here. But what you want to pay attention to is where everybody's in good agreement that that will start to recurve. Again, this is the GFS and the Euro ensembles. What you're seeing is just a bunch of models from the American and the European played out again and again and again to see what the ultimate result would be. We still have tropical watches, tropical storm watches, excuse me, for the northern section of the Leeward Islands, uh, but so far has not been extended to the Virgin Islands or Puerto Rico. That's because looking at this wind field, again, it's going to pass just north of Puerto Rico.